welcome to uh, Crazy Web Comics. Uh, I'm Big White. I used to do a web comic for uh, seven years daily uh, called Japanese Beetle for uh, utterly burning out on that. <laughs> um, I thought I'd put together a nice little presentation here on how to create your own web comics. Does anyone here have a web comic? Would you create a web comic? Just curious. Possible. Possible? Create or just create? I've been sporadically using uh, Chogger. Um, right. a local Pittsburgh thing for uh, comics. I had, I, at one point, I was the most prolific color person. But I stopped doing it about two months ago, maybe three months ago. Well, did you stop? Uh, lack of ideas. That's all his art was. Actually, my, my That's movies, a different session. They had that earlier today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did, uh, I probably did 30 or 40, uh, maybe 10 or 20 on Podcamp uh, Pod, uh, Pittsburgh 3. So a bunch of things with, uh, uh, computer elements talking about podcasting, podcasting. Well, webcomics is a huge topic. We've got people doing all sorts of different kinds of webcomics. There's 8 million methods. I can't possibly get into everything that involved in creating a webcomic in 45 minutes. So I'm going to be focusing on the behind the scenes technical aspects of it and some of the things you should think about while you're creating and before you create a webcomic. Uh, if people have specific questions that go outside where I want, just feel free to pipe up anytime time during the talk. I don't have uh, any uh, problems answering them as they're uh, from them. Um, let's start at the beginning. All right, uh, before you start, uh, there are, as with anything, there are a couple things you should think about. Uh, why are you doing this? Who are you doing this for? Um, you know, very basic, simple questions. What's your ultimate goal? What do you want to do with the comic? Uh, is it just online? Do you want to take it to print? Are you looking to syndicate the comic? Uh, with the newspaper syndicates. Uh, all these are concerns that will change how you format and uh, develop your comic, and even the sort of site structure you might develop. Uh, I recommend these are some good books to read uh, about the creating comic process. Uh, Understanding Comics and Reinventing Comics by Scott McLeod uh, are specifically about the art of comics as opposed to just drawing. And uh, reinventing comics is specifically about some of the trials and challenges of digital comics uh, and the roles they present. Uh, How to Be a Graphic Designer Without Losing Your Soul is not specifically about comics, but it's a great book about how to set your own rules and uh, meet them. Um, and Even a Monkey Can Draw Manga is a great book because it is a, basically just a gigantic list of things <coughs> that you shouldn't do. <laughs> Um, there's a million and one things which have been done to death and are cliché and overbearing, and uh, this book puts them all out there for you to see them. Maybe a little hard to find, it's currently out of print, but I do see it at news bookstores all the time. Um, to give a good example, the last thing the world needs right now is probably another webcomic about video games, or about a hot nerd chick who falls in love with a schlubby nerd guy with no medium qualities. There are a zillion and one of these already, um, unless you have a really interesting twist on it, probably you're better off uh, turning to different pastors. Um, these are some good general resources on uh, digital comics, just uh, the various uh, <coughs> review sites, uh, sites about you know, comics theory. Um, I will also have these, so you don't have to read all these and write these down. I'm going to be posting this presentation on my blog, uh, 7415comics.com. Uh, at the conclusion of this talk. So, um, you're, and of course, these are all being recorded and put out on Vivo, which also um, Now, the first thing you need to consider when you're doing this is format. Um, what are you doing? Are you doing a comic book or type uh, web comic? Are you doing a comic strip? Are you doing editorial cartoons? Are you doing something different? All these can change how you're formatting the comic. And I have some examples uh, here. Here's your standard uh, PDP. It's, it's a comic strip. We originally created it. His intent was, I mean, no one His intent was to syndicate it, which he has self syndicated to a number of newspapers. But he was pitching to studios, and that meant he had to keep a specific aspect ratio, a 14 by 3 aspect ratio that pretty much every newspaper comic except Peanuts has. And the only reason Peanuts has a different ratio is because it's doing reprints from 25 years ago. Um, and you can see. That affects how he does the storytelling, how he lays out the site. 
um, we might want to have a comic like Sister Claire, which is intended to go to book format, and therefore it's got a wide, the top, not a wide format, but a tall format. Um, these are basically projects that are intended for print. Um, both of those artists are working for print, and as a result, their original files are ginormous. They're probably 300 to 600 dpi, uh, which is a concern you don't have if you're creating a uh, purely digital comic. Um, if you're creating a comic whose intention is mostly digital, you might want to say, fit it to the format of the screen. That's is one of Scott McCall's big bugaboos. He hates digital comics that are formatted for something other than print. He hates it when you have two pages side by side because that's not how you read on the web. It's an anachronism born from taking comics over the web. Uh, here's an example of a comic formatted for the screen, uh, Cat and Girl. Um, the question you have to ask, of course, when you're formatting for the screen is, uh, whose screen are you formatting it for? Are you formatting it for this 10, 24 by 768 screen? Or are you formatting it for someone's white laptop screen? Um, if you uh, really don't, let me skip ahead to here. Are you formatting it for one of these? Because uh, here's a popular webcomic pictures for sad children uh, looking like total crap on a uh, iPhone. <laughs> um, this is going to, I'll get back to this later, this is going to change how comics are formatted in the near future. But, uh, if you're not preparing your comics for print or reproduction, you can do all sorts of neat things. Um, the concept, since you're not preparing to print it, you have no restrictions on how your comic is shaped or sized or what you're going to do with it. Um, nobody scores, for instance, his comics are always a fixed width, but he makes them exactly as tall as he needs to tell an individual story in a single strip. If that means his comic is this tall, his comic is that tall. It means it's three times longer than this, and I have seen the strip. Do strip three times longer than this, you will do a gigantic strip. Um, or you wind up with something huge and sprawling, like uh, Choose Your Own Carl, which is a comic that can be read in any direction. Uh, this is considerably shrunk down. On my laptop screen, this was uh, 20 or 30 screens <laughs> um, worth of material that you could scroll through. Obviously, you're not going to be doing something giant sprawling like that if your intention is to print it in the book later. Uh, you'd have to reformat and chop it up quite a bit. Um, again, the iPhone, smartphones generally have a resolution of about 320 by 480. Uh, a good strip, like if you look at PVP, PVP strip fits in a tiny little window there. You can scroll horizontally to get to it, that's nice. But um, if your ambition is to do something a little more uh, dramatic with multiple tiers, um, you should know that it's not going to work on a smartphone. There are a lot of apps in the where people are adapting uh, comics to the smartphone by creating an application that basically shows one panel at a time. That's, um, that's a little limiting in my uh, perspective, but occasionally we wind up with something. Uh, Marvel recently repackaged one of their comics as a motion comic. If anyone has seen, uh, has anyone seen a Spider-Woman motion comic or uh, the Tales from the Black Writer motion comic that they did with Watchmen? It's basically just a comic book, except there are some limited animations, and there are people reading all the captions out loud, and you can't read. Uh, uh, it, it's interesting. It adds a little digital flavor. And people have been doing experiments like that pretty much since the internet came out. You have things like uh, Argon Zark was a web comic from back in the very, very early days, 96, 97, uh, where they had animated GIFs and image maps and branching storylines, all things that you could do specifically by web-related technologies that could reproduce and print. Uh, you'll occasionally wind up with, I don't wish I had a screen capture right now, something like um, MS Paint Adventures, if anyone's ever read that, which is a comic that has branching storylines, takes input from the users, even has long interactive video game sequences that you can play that don't necessarily affect the outcome of the comic. You're basically just running through it, but it gives you something to do other than just look at. Um, to me, if you're going to go that far, you might as well go, away, go all the way and make an uh, animated movie. Uh, but there are also things to consider if you want to create something entirely from the web. Um, there are some other issues. Uh, if you want to do uh, black and white versus color, uh, the trade off here is pretty obvious. Black and white is somewhat less appealing than color. Uh, color takes a lot longer to do correctly if you're doing it right. Um, Potential reuse issues. You want to reuse it for an image for a poster or something like that. Uh, you will, be, will want to work at a much higher resolution than you do not. Um, another big one, 
how frequently do you want to update the comment? That's a big one. Um, it's less big these days thanks to RSS, uh, because people can just bookmark your RSS feed and come back every time you have an update. Um, but you still want to have regular updates or else people don't even just stop checking your RSS feed too. I mean, if you don't update in Blue Moon, people are not going to come back uh, and take a look at your comment even if you find a new update. Um, my general recommendation is that you should probably be updating a minimum of once a week. Um, preferably at least three times a week. If you're doing it once a week, you probably want to make sure that your uh, update is a little more special than just a single comment strip that you get in the newspaper. Because once a week is probably not enough for people to get to fix that. Um, the other question is how much of a buffer do you want to have for when you get sick or lazy or decide to go to the mall instead of actually sitting down in the drawing room and drawing something. Um, because it happens to the best of us. We all start with about a three week advantage and then it gets whittled down to nothing. Some people work fine like that. There are people who basically sit down every night and can draw like a machine, sit out and crank out a script in about two or three hours. Um, it takes me about six to eight hours to draw one, so I need a larger buffer. Uh, typically, I recommend having at least a week, probably more. It depends on your working habits. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? So you mean it takes you six to eight hours for one right. episode, and, so to speak? Right, and that's from conception. Conception through to execution. So at general, for me, and this is just my process, it takes me about an hour to come up with the basic concept, uh, another hour to refine it and sketch it, um, maybe two to three hours to pencil it and make sure all the anatomy, you know, anatomy is correct. Mm -hmm. Um, another hour to ink it. I use traditional tools, which takes longer because that's what you need to dry. Then I even have to scan it and color it in on the computer, which I've gotten much faster at it, so having done this for you know, a decade and a half now. Uh, but, you know, it's still laborious. Some scripts take much longer, you know. This idea comes to you fully formed and you just crap it out. And some just drag on and on and on because you're drawing that person's leg and you just can't get it right. It's not in the right perspective. Uh, but yes, for me, generally six, six to eight hours. Um, that's long. Most people who are web comic cartoonists usually can reduce one in about two to three hours. There are some people I've seen who whipped out a complete strip completely in about 15 minutes. Um, and those people are insane. Um, any other questions? Okay. Um, craft is a section that I'm basically largely going to skip over here. That's the actual physical production of the comics. Um, that's a uh, big can of worms because there's no right way to create a comic. I've seen people who draw the comics in ballpoint pen on typing paper. I've seen people who use Indian ink on an illustration board. I've seen people who do fully painted comics. I've seen people who do it entirely digitally. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, the only thing I'm going to do is uh, make an appeal uh, oh, let me get there. Uh, here are some good books on craft if you're interested. Uh, comics and Sequential Art by Will Eisner is probably one of the oldest books there. Um, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, despite the fact that it is geared towards making you draw Spider Man, is actually a fairly good uh, book on how to do basic comic storytelling. It's a good book on how to draw. Yeah. Uh, understanding comics and making comics like Captain Scott McCloud, again, deal with the sort of Comics theory in general, and then the very specific methods of producing comics. Um, and drawing by the right side of the brain is pretty much the most successful drawing book mm -hmm. of the last 50 years, so it probably doesn't need much of a further introduction. If you don't have a hobby, you should probably go out and buy one right now if you're interested in drawing at all. Go through it about once a year. This is the only craft issue I'm going to make. Uh, oh, and here's some websites. Uh, Comic Tools is actually a very good one. Uh, that's just about uh, various. You know, working methods, God even ranks things like various types of exacto knives and what they're good for. I mean, it's insanely detailed, and I'm glad someone else is doing it, so I don't have to do it. Um, Comic Crazies is mostly a site devoted to reproducing uh, stuff in the old age of comics, but about once a month, they take uh, a old issue of the uh, famous artist's correspondence course, if you've ever seen that, that, you know, draw the pirate or draw the turtle, um, which was developed by some top flight cartoonists in the 50s, uh, they reprint those old things from the 50s and 60s as a PDF for the download, which is a, they're very interesting reading. Um, these last three are just, they all have various tools artists to use. I think it's self-explanatory. Uh, uh, Webcomics.com and Consequential Art, both prose 
tutorials from time to time. And the only specific craft issue I'm going to address is that you should probably invest in a font other than Comic Sans if you're not going to be doing it. I have nothing against Comic Sans personally. It's a great display font. It's not a great dialogue font. You are reading huge blocks of Comic Sans. It is hard to read. Um, there are actually some very affordable fonts. Uh, Blambot here makes some nice fonts. Uh, but the gold standard is uh, Comic Craft, who pretty much does, at one point in the 90s, did the lettering for almost every comic book that was commercially available in the United States. They have some really sweet fonts. Uh, you can see that they may be a little pricey. Uh, $99. However, once a year on New Year's Day, they do a sale where every font they have goes on sale for the year in price. So in 2010, every font they have on New Year's Day will retail for $20.10. So uh, <laughs> if you can hold that three months, you can get a great part. Because uh, some of these fonts are really nice. This font here at the bottom is one of theirs. It's modeled after uh, Portuguese illustrator Pascal Ferry's uh, art. Uh, Personal handwriting, it's a really nice, sort of smooth font. They have a million others. Brian Vaughn, they have a, is a good one. They have a couple from other, uh, Alex Ross's personal handwriting, and everything else that other font. If those names mean anything to you. Um, that's my only recommendation is, to, is get a decent font. I personally prefer doing it by hand, but uh, you know, <laughs> some people just can't write legibly or, and believe me, this can be a lot faster writing it out by hand, especially since you want to get out the light off and uh, make corrections and figure out how to read, read other things on the fly. If you're over by one word, you don't suddenly screw up an entire page's worth of comments. Uh, anyone have any questions? What about non-comic fonts? Not just going with general font site, uh, getting something that's uh, non-serif font. Um, you can even use a surf font. And the only thing I would say is, again, be careful not to get a display font. Something like uh, Bauhaus, for instance, uh, to use a font that people may be familiar with, or Impact, is great in small doses, and you wouldn't want to read a whole paragraph. If you wouldn't read a whole paragraph of it because it's too bold or too flashy looking, um, that's the only recommendation. You could letter a whole font in Arial, you could letter a whole font in Helvetica, or Script in Helvetica, or even Times, and that, that will work perfectly fine just as long as you pay attention to what you do. Any other questions? Um, one of the bigger ones is uh, questions hosting. There's a lot of different hosting. Oh, do you have a question? Okay, we're just going. <laughs> uh, hosting is a big uh, one. There's uh, basically there are three options. There are some dedicated comic hosting sites out there, services that will freely host your comic. Uh, other social media sites actually do a fairly good job of hosting web comics as well, uh, depending on the site. Um, you can go the crazy route and do it yourself, um, which is actually not so hard either. It's very simple. Um, one of the most popular ones is uh, Comics Genesis, formerly uh, Kingspot. Um, it's got a very basic layout here. Um, all these ones for dedicated comics hosting sites we'll see have very similar layouts. Uh, the big thing for Comics Genesis is they do the little calendar doing, which at one point every web comic had to have, and you see sort of less and less these days. Um, they're, again, they're totally free. Um, you do, might get some ad revenue, assuming your ad does well enough, uh, though rarely your site is not really going to be doing a lot on Comics Genesis, because Comics Genesis is huge. You get some cross-promotional things. They randomly select comics to feature on the front page of their website uh, to randomly promote comics on other comics on the website. Um, their layout options are very basic. You don't get a lot of choices on layout. Um, and their interface for actually uploading comics is not so great. But it's free. And it is actually perfectly functional. There's nothing. Do you give away your do you, do you give away rights if you upload? Them? No. Uh, for pretty much almost all these sites I'm doing the list, you really don't give away. Uh, any rights, anything you upload. Uh, you give away certain, you do sign over certain rights. They can use images of your comics in their services. Um, but I don't believe, for this, they don't retain any rights to your comic at all. People have ganked their comics off here. The other advantage of Comic Genesis is that if your strip does well enough in terms of advertising revenue, you might get promoted up to Keen Spot, which is a bigger, basically, it's not.
is still free, and you still do get a share of your ad revenue, uh, but it's a much more selective wall guard. People in there are basically, they know what they're doing. They're, they, they're, they're strips like Superosity, if anyone remembers Superosity. Um, these guys found it most like, but they're, they're, they've got a proven track record of performance, and that they only have a proven track record. Um, Webcomic is a similar one. Uh, it used to be a forum, now it's a free, uh, sorry, it used to be a forum, now it's a, uh, a free web comic site. Basically the same problems as Comic Genesis does. It's got a very simple layout, can't really tweak all that. It's a bit wonky, uh, but it does a nice, solid, reliable job. They're almost never down. Um, and you, again, you don't sign away any properties. Um, Drunk Duck, on the other hand, is one where uh, here is a site where you may be signing away some intellectual property agreements. I'm not going to quote me on that, but Platinum Studios, which is the company that runs uh, Drunk Duck, has had some legal problems lately with bankruptcy and other things going on. Uh, and they may change their terms of service, which I would just keep on that. I have not heard of anyone's company stolen by Drunk Duck, but it's, it's a possibility. They've had uh, Hero by Night is one of their comics. If anyone knows local comic artist PJ Kaufman, uh, he's had some legal problems with that. Uh, and Platinum trying to get rid of uh, Platinum doesn't want to publish it. He holds all the copyrights, but they hold all the trademarks. So can't get it back. Um, you can post your comics online, Journal, if you want. There are some very successful cartoons who just Take their images and pump them right down in the middle of the live journal post. Uh, Kate Beaton is a Canadian uh, artist. She does uh, history comics and weird little uh, uh, just non sequitur uh, flights of fancy uh, that are remarkably hilarious. Uh, so does uh, Lucy Nisley, who has been published by, uh, I believe, it's Simon and Schuster. She's had a, uh, a book of her uh, French. Uh, travelogues published and has another book coming up about uh, her culinary exploits. Um, you can even post them on Flickr. Um, here's the Lap Out Labs cat. Let's see if anyone is familiar with that. Uh, all he did was take his strips, scan them in, and put them in a Flickr account. There's an RSS feed, no problem. Uh, this approach probably works best if you're not doing a uh, continuity strip where there's a plot that continues from day to day. These are all one shot gags. And therefore, it works just fine. It doesn't really affect the order you read them in at all. Um, if you're doing continuity strip, it's going to get a little confusing. Um, there are some uh, sites that are not necessarily a great fit for your digital comics. Uh, MySpace is not particularly a great format for comics. It's it's uh, site comics. It's cluttered. Uh, when you see a site like uh, Dark Horse Presents here. They basically had to do some a lot of munging in order to get it to work. Um, probably more than the average person is going to be able or willing to do. They um, did a good job. They did a remarkable job. I mean, they did a really great job. Um, it's probably beyond the average MySpace user to set up something like this. So they had direct help from MySpace to do this gigantic flash format that they did. Um, you can also do it yourself. Here's a site that hosts itself. It's basically using a WordPress template uh, and a uh, WordPress plugin called Comic Press, which is devoted, I mean, that's all it is, it's a WordPress plugin that's designed to help you do comic strips. Uh, it's really nice, it, it's WordPress, so you have all the flexibility you get from doing WordPress templates. Um, here are some uh, other comic management, content management systems. Um, <laughs> comic CMS is a good one, and Comic Press I just mentioned. And, iStrip is very basic and also free, which is a very good uh, recommendation for that. that. Um, you can go totally crazy and write your own. It's not too hard. All you really need is something that munges the date and checks to see if a file is there. I mean, it's very basic. If you want to, I wrote my own uh, uh, content management system, which was very stupid. In PHP, uh, no, not even PHP, Perl, 15 years ago, and haven't changed it since, except to change all the Perl to PHP. It's still hot. Uh, I'm sorry, it still operates in the same basic principles. Um, does anyone have any questions about uh, the hosting uh, Have you ever heard of Chogger? I have. I have used Chogger. 
Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is Charter doesn't, it didn't last time I checked, it may have been a while. It did not have an RSS feed last time I checked where you could, uh, where your comics would be completely with Right, yeah, I don't know if they've updated it to that yet. Yes. Um, the only thing is, I would say about Charter is it's really more of uh, a drawing tool. It's, if you've already produced something, it's a little harder to squeeze it into their existing format. That's true. I um, strictly use it online, and I just take clip art and paste it no. in. And I just use it for the, the ability to create the balloons and uh, it's simplistic. That's uh, Chogger.com for anyone who's uh, That's a, a local Pittsburgh company uh, who went through Alpha Lab. Yeah. Uh, they did a nice presentation at the last talk camp. Uh, site design is not something else to think about. Um, there's some very basic things for comics, I think. Uh, big one should be an inch. Uh, your strip should be front and center when someone lands right on your own. Um, I'm assuming this is a comic strip. I have no idea. If I'm coming back to the site, I don't want to have to constantly go digging for the latest update. Uh, but there are SSV jumps me right out on my homepage every time, and there's nothing there I have to click. That's a personal source of annoyance, but it's very basic. The other thing I would suggest is have some pretty clear unambiguous navigation. Here's an example from Octopus Pop, which is one of my favorite strips. It's pretty hard to mistake those gigantic arrows on either side of the comic. It's pretty obvious where you're supposed to click to go backwards and forwards. Um, occasionally, you'll have seen sites where they're blurry or they're cutesy little characters holding signs, which is, which is fine, but sometimes that can be a little hard to read, uh, especially on a small monitor or with a low resolution. Um, SEO, search engine optimization is actually a topic which um, a lot of comic sites don't necessarily uh, worry about. Um, you're doing mostly images for people are thinking, so um, you're not really going to, I mean, you're going to use an image search for that, but a lot of people are going to be searching for scripts in their favorite topics, and that might not necessarily show up in an image search. Um, it actually, uh, most comic scripts have too much dialogue to put in, say, even a long desk after you an image. Um, there's still nothing stopping you. Uh, what I would recommend is when you're uploading your site, uh, make a hidden div somewhere and put your script in. Um, just set the display to none, put your script in there. It, it puts the text up there and no one's going to see it with a search engine. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can sign up with a service like Ono Robot, which allows uh, you to put that on your site and your users can transcribe your scripts. And it also gives you uh, a free search engine to put on your site. Hmm. Um, it's actually a pretty useful resource. Um, you should almost definitely have an RSS feed, but it's hard to imagine a site these days without one. Um, one question is if you're starting a site, whether you want a forum, whether you want comments, whether you even want either one of them. Um, I generally find that if you're going to have a, a continuity strip or something that updates multiple frequently, you probably want a forum just so people can have a conversation and continues as the story continues. If you're doing gag day strips or updating infrequently, comments on each individual strip are probably better than that. Um, promoting a website um, is probably another separate presentation entirely, but uh, I'm going to list some things that are seem to be uh, popular lately. Uh, one popular thing seems to be setting up Twitter accounts for your various characters and updating them. Uh, this is a little insane. This guy uh, actually updates these on a daily basis. Uh, he has about eight characters, this is questionable content, who are Twittering, and some of them are Twittering a huge stream of stuff. Um, and they're all done in character, and they all have appropriate website files. Um, some of them even yammer at each other, which is a little um, disconcerting at times. Um, Ustream, which you can see is a nice figure, uh, allows people to uh, put up a live video feed of whatever they're doing, uh, sort of like Vivo. Uh, basically, a lot of cartoonists with heavy bandwidth uh, allocations are using Ustream to show what it's like when they draw. I don't get the appeal myself because I don't want to see someone hunched over a drawing board for four hours, erasing and redrawing and erasing and redrawing. I get enough of that in my daily life. Um, but it can be fascinating to watch. Um, there are a bunch of other simple promotion techniques, but someone else can go into much better than I do. I'm not doing the webcomic currently, partly because I inadequately promoted my last comic. Um, and making money off a webcomic is one question I always get. 
Um, and my only advice to that is uh, good luck with that, because uh, this is the average web comic business model. It's like the underpants ones from software. It is exactly the underpants ones from software. People don't have a business model. They basically, and this is true for anything, it's not just web comics. Blogs too, people just throw it out there and think they're trying to somehow make money. Um, there are a couple of common strategies. Um, subscriptions generally do not work unless we're selling porn. People are not willing to pay money for it unless it's done. Um, there are some strategies that work better. People will make donations. Donations generally are an easier sell if uh, what you are doing is offering bonus content or something similar. Uh, some sites do, if you, they get a certain level of donations, they have extra strips that month. Uh, for MS Payment Ventures, he will draw anything you want and put it in the strip if you pay him and uh, basically make a $10 donation. Um, this has led his strip to do some truly crazy things you can see here where you have giant robots facing off against uh, gigantic plant monsters and a statue which appears to be the combined head of Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. Uh, you can sell t-shirts. T-shirts is a uh, popular one. Some websites actually seem more like, uh, less like comic strips and more like uh, marketing venue for t-shirt companies sometimes. But um, people are actually, strangely enough, sometimes more willing to buy a t-shirt than they are willing to buy a book. Um, if you want to do t-shirts, my recommendation for that is if you don't actually use a print-on-demand site like Cafe Press. Generally, um, they do have the advantage of you don't have to do anything other than upload the design. They have the disadvantage of that their base costs are so high, they're probably not going to make a lot of money off many t-shirts if you do sell through them. Um, you can go, t-shirt printing is actually remarkably cheap. Um, there are lots of good, good local companies, like Commonwealth Press on the south side is very good for t very reasonable for t-shirt printing, in one color, uh, they have specials, that, frequent specials, which you can take advantage of. The only disadvantage of getting all the stuff printed in advance is then you have to wear it, so, um, and you have to take orders. It's not going to make a break back. You can do a decent one of t-shirts for 50 bucks, uh, but then you're stuck with all the smalls that no one wants to buy and all the quadruple X's that no one wants to buy. Um, it's a small price to pay, though, for actually, you'll actually make money on it. Um, here's some of the common strategies. Advertising, of course, is another common one. Uh, I think I've covered most of these. Collections, of course, is where most people really want to make their money. Collections are strange now, actually a pretty hard sell for web comics because a lot of people say, I've already got it for free online. Why would I pay money for it? Um, People add bonus content to their collections. And they're actually a very easy sell in person. You meet someone in person that's a, a comic book convention or a book signing. It's very easy to sell someone in collections. It's a little harder to do. I think that's the end of my presentation. Uh, does anyone have any further questions about comics or in general or uh, web comics specific? No, I've answered every question you can see that we have. <laughs> Question: Is there a, a resource for finding like freelance artists to do? Like, is there like one website that tends to have a lot of them? Um, as an artist myself, I tend not to look for one, but yeah. uh, it's um, I'm sure there's one out there. Um, trolling deviant art is always a good way to find someone who's. Uh, I mean, you can find plenty of people who may be drawing this sort of idiom that you're looking for. I'm going to work with them. That's always a good way to find new artists and new art style. Right? Okay. Going to your local comic book store and posting something up also tends to work very well. Yeah. Okay. Going to your local art school and going, hey. Yeah, like yeah. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyone else have a question? Or no, you just got Sorry. <laughs> Too quick on the All right, well, thank you. Um, we're actually a little ahead of schedule. Ten minutes. Everyone can finish question. Has anybody done any comics about Hotcam? You did last year on Chuck. Yes, I know. <laughs> 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 well, do you, do you, uh, when uh, you select topics, do you do things about your life? Do you do things about I ideas? do nonsense kinds of movie scripts. Uh, the strip I did for years was a uh, superhero continuity strip. So 
based this long order that they're torn from the current headlines and then uh, work beyond all uh, reason. Um, but uh, there are plenty of people who do comics uh, based on real life or uh, auto bio comics or people who do comics online. Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of, I'm not aware of any specific five cam comics of the Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.